right, and welcome back. This is Raul. Uh, this is the third segment in the Dofer A140 envelope generator demonstration. In the last two demonstrations, we uh, talked a little bit about the settings of the A140 uh, in the middle right there, the low setting, and then the medium setting over on the right. Uh, this time around, we're going to explore the high setting over on the left. Uh, but in order to effectively do that, I need to kind of set up a patch. That's one thing. And then the other thing I wanted to do was kind of explain um, what you're going to be seeing here. Because uh, if you'll notice, the LFO is not around uh, to be triggering uh, my envelope generator. So this time around, I'm going to be act I'm going to actually be using the internal bus of the Dofer uh, G6. Uh, case that's the rack case that all of these modules are in so I wanted to explain a little bit about how it's going to be triggering these uh, here in a minute uh, so a couple things you may have seen in the ring modulation demo or maybe you didn't uh, this little guy featured over here the Dofer A190-1 uh, MIDI interface uh, it has a MIDI port here and I have this plugged into my MIDI keyboard so my MIDI keyboard is going to be sending notes into this and if I press a key you'll see the gate light down here light up there you go uh, but one other other interesting thing you'll notice is that my a140 is also lighting up so why is it doing that well uh, the reason for that is that there is an internal bus within the case that actually will carry that same gate information that on off kind of thing where that way it knows okay so it's receiving that I'm pressing a key and I'm letting go of a key. If I hold down a key, it stays lit because it knows that the key is being held down. If I let go, then it knows that the key was just released. So that information is being sent internally inside the case over to the A140. Um, now you can bypass this if you wanted to, um, and it's fairly easy. Uh, you can either just plug a cable in. So then if I plug that cable in, I press it, you'll notice that my MIDI notes are still coming in over here. See? But this light is no longer coming on. That's because it's expecting to feel a gate from my cable here. So if I were to plug this into an LFO, uh, you would then get that little light uh, flashing again. So, but now that I unplugged it, you should see it come on and off. There you go. Just like that. So that's what you're going to be seeing here in a little bit. So in case you're wondering um, how this is all happening, um, that's how it's happening. So that's the, that's the explanation part of this demonstration coming up. Um, now we're just going to set up a basic patch and then just dive right in and start uh, patching away. So uh, we're going to use the A110 as our sound source. Um, and I'm going to actually take two different waveforms. Uh, my triangle wave, which is my favorite. I'm going to patch that into audio N1 of my VCA right there. And then I'm going to be taking the pulse wave and going into audio N2. So there we go with that. Now I take the output of my A131. BCA, and then I plug it into my mixer over here, input one. And uh, if I press the key, I don't hear anything. And why is that? Well, that's because my envelope, it is being triggered, but it's not being triggered, uh, or it's not triggering the VCA, so the volume over here. So what I need to do for that is I just uh, take the output of my 140, and then I just patch it right in to the gain control voltage input. There you go. So now when I press a key, there you go. You got a sound. If I hold it down, then it will also sustain the note as well. And that sustain is actually controlled by the sustain, if you remember us talking about the sustain. So sustain uh, is going to control 
how loud it's going to be at that level when I hold a key down. So if I bring it all the way down, like down here somewhere, you can hear it gets a little bit loud at the decay time, and that just kind of fizzles out. I could bring my release time up and it'll continue after I let go of the key, but it still never really gets too loud because the sustain level is not very loud. But if I go higher, now I'm achieving more of a usable, sustainable note. So there you go. Okay, now the other thing I didn't mention, uh, which is kind of uh, just a little bit interesting, is that my MIDI notes are coming in here and they're also on the same bus that we were talking about that sends the gate information is also sending note information to the A110 VCO because you'll notice that the notes are changing and that's then there's no patch cables so you know you probably said well why, why is it doing that well because the notes are going in here they're going in the internal bus and then they're coming right back into the A110. Now the convention we talked about where you can bypass uh, the internal bus uh, remains the same. So I believe if I plug something into CV1 here, yeah, it's no longer playing the notes I'm playing on the keyboard because I'm not sitting here playing the same note on the keyboard. I'm actually going down the whole keyboard, but like right there was an octave, but you can't really tell because it's bypassed. So if I unplug the CV1, I get my octave back. So that's what's going on with the VCO there, just so you know. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the A140. And uh, one thing that I wasn't really able to do the last time, although I did it a little bit, I think, was to kind of show how a sound can evolve from a low, medium, high, uh, at least from a performing standpoint, uh, you know, the last two we did were kind of more uh, making sound like kick drums, you know, that kind of thing. Not things that you would actually play on a keyboard. So these are more sounds that you would play on a keyboard. So like, let's say, I like this sound. Maybe I just the attack a little bit. Okay, something like that. Uh, now, if I want to make it a little bit longer, I can go to the medium setting. So there you go, it's lasting a little bit longer. So uh, that's fairly useful you know, if you're performing and you have a sound and you just want to sustain it a little bit longer than you did before. So you can go quickly from a very staccato type sound to a longer sustainable sound rather than having to go down here and start tweaking all your settings and then try to figure out how to get back to your original setting. You can just change the three different modes of the A140. So now if I listen to my sound there in the medium setting and I want to take it over to high, uh, this can go up to minutes over here on high. So it takes a really long time for that attack time to come in. So right there, I'm just holding down the note. And right there, I've, I've achieved my sustain level. So if I let go, it's gonna hit my release time. And so what you should see here shortly is that light will slowly, slowly, slowly start to fade away with my release time. And again, the envelope generator can go up to minutes, so I don't know if I want to actually make you watch that, but if I bring it down, I can make it manually sort of fade away. That way we don't sit here and wait two and a half minutes on the end of a note. And you can see it getting dimmer and dimmer. There's still actually a little bit of voltage there. And then finally it starts to go dimmer and dimmer until it finally disappears. So that's the idea uh, behind the ADSR. And there, I'm pressing a note and holding it. It's coming in. Now, if I wanted to do this slightly differently, I could bring it down. To, let's bring it down to the minimum. That way we can kind of hear where we're 
we're starting like what the shortest value in the long setting would be so still uh, you can hear the note there as we're playing it it's not a click so if I go to that same setting in the low setting it's barely audible it's a click and the only thing probably that um, will tell you that there's actually a note happening there is this gate over here because you can see the gate and your, your ear is probably saying hey I should be hearing something there so you might be straining listening but don't strain too much because it's it's not a, a very long sound so if I go over to medium it's still mostly a click but maybe more like a rim shot or you know very very uh, dull cowbell when I go into high setting though I'm getting a little bit more of a uh, of pitches coming out of there something like that uh, now you can hear that it's a little bit chopped at the beginning or very uh, immediate so the more I bring up my attack time the more it will sort of fade in I like that and it's going to the sustain level it's just kind of staying there because I'm holding the note down as you can see and then when I let go, it immediately shuts off because my release time is very short. Now, if I wanted to tweak this a little bit, um, I could. Um, I could make it a very long, long um, fading in of the sound. So if I hold that down, nothing's happening yet. And you can see this is getting a little bit brighter. So here comes my sound. And it's getting to that same level. But then when I release, it's just going to chop off. See? There you go. Now, if I increase my release time a little bit, um, it will continue to fade out rather than just very abruptly fade out. So let's hear what that sounds like. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. I'm not going to bring it up to the max because we know that now that this goes up to minutes. So let's hold this down. And we haven't quite reached our initial volume past our attack time there we go and so now when I let go or release the key should be a little more gradual you can see the gates off lights still lit over here slowly fading away there it goes and then it'll just continue until it gets to the very very minimum there it goes and just fades away into almost nothing. I don't know if I'd want to say absolute zero, but pretty close. And there you still have a little bit of voltage. Um, so let's experiment a little bit with uh, the decay time. So I'm going to bring up uh, the decay time a little bit. So we have kind of a medium release, almost medium. Uh, and then we have a kind of long attack, so it takes a while to fade in. I'm going to bring up the decay just a little bit and just uh, hear what we hear. So here we go, here's another one. Again, long attack. I'm liking that quite a bit, actually. Nice little fade in. Nice little fade out. And now let's bring up the sustain time a little bit. Maybe about the halfway mark, just estimating. So what we should hear is it actually should get a little bit louder because now the sustain level is set to be a little louder. So while I'm holding down the key, it's going to be louder. And then when I let go, then the volume starts to drop. Now we could maintain that sustain time and then maybe bring down our release time and hear what that sounds like. Let's try that. So I'm going to bring release all the way down. And then we're going to wait for our long attack in. There we go. 
waiting, waiting. So we should be nearing our sustain time. So then when I let go, it's going to just very abruptly stop. So this is, a, again, another kind of, uh, kind of sonic effect that you can employ in whatever sound or um, kind of mood that you're trying to create with your music. Um, and uh, very, very useful as well. Uh, just for learning about sound in general. So like now that you know that this is what this uh, particular setting does in a high range and you want to shorten it, and actually bring it down to about the medium setting, try it out. And I hope you'll pardon my uh, minimalist or simplistic uh, notes here, but I didn't uh, memorize any um, melodies over here, just playing a basic up and down the scale here. There you go. So something like that. Um, and then if I go all the way to my low setting, I have that same kind of idea. Just like a shorter amount of time. Something like that. So that's the kind of sound we got going on right now. Um, I'll switch back to the high setting. Okay, long attack again, remember. But still, I haven't changed anything. It's just the amount of time that the envelope is actually generating over is what has changed. So then when I release, it's going to be very abrupt. There it goes. So. That's the idea behind the A140 uh, in the high setting. Um, I think you got the idea of what that actually does. So as we as we talked about before, uh, this other output is actually just second output. So if you want to use another uh, maybe uh, CV input on something else like a filter, uh, you could run the same envelope from the envelope here, or same envelope. Uh, excuse me, uh, into the filter as well. So the CV input of your filter can be um, modified by the same envelope. You could also have your own envelope. If you had two of these modules, uh, you could have one dedicated to the filter and one dedicated to the VCA. Um, or you can modify them with the same thing. Uh, so that's our first basic patch here that we're doing.